Hey everyone, so in this uh, video on clustering, we will take a look at some of the other um, uh, types of agglomerative methods. Uh, so remember, agglomerative methods are just a kind of hierarchical clustering methods, right? So, so we'll uh, uh, look at uh, this method called as complete linkage, right? So the difference between complete linkage and single linkage, which we saw in the previous video, is basically um, the, uh, how uh, the, cal the, the, the main difference is this uh, calculation in the distance between two groups. So for complete linkage, uh, distance between two groups is the distance between their farthest members. For single linkage, linkage, it was the distance between the closest members. For complete, is the distance between the farthest members. So again, I have these two groups, X and Y. X has two elements, Y has two elements. So distance between cluster X and cluster Y or group X and group Y is maximum of all of these pairwise distances. Remember, DX1, Y1 is just the Euclidean distance between this first row in X and first row in Y, okay? So for complete linkage, we are looking at the maximum distances. So now the furthest elements turn out to be uh, x1 and y2 and this distance is 3.162278 so basically everything else will run accord uh, in the same way as it did for single linkage only this uh, distance calculation will change slightly uh, so again we're going to work through the same example as we did for single linkage so this is a distance matrix. Remember, we don't need actual data. For clustering, all we care about are the distances between the elements. So we have five elements here, and this is a five by five distance matrix, uh, bet uh, matrix of distance between the elements. So, uh, okay, so remember again, we always cluster the groups uh, that are closest to each other. So right now I have a group containing one, another group containing two and so on, and finally a group containing five. So the smallest distance is this two. So the groups containing three and five are the closest to each other. So we'll be clustering uh, three and five together. So basically we have the following groups now, right? We have a group with one, two, four, three and five. So next we need to um, update our distance matrix uh, in the same way as we did for single linkage. So basically we need to calculate distances between all of these new groups now. So distance between 1, 2, and 4 is not going to change, but distance between what we have to focus on is distance between 3, 5, this group, and all of these other groups. Okay, so I've put this new group structure in the bottom just for reference. So I need to find out distance between 3, 5, and 1. So remember, the distance between this group and this group is the distance between the furthest elements. So I calculate distance between 3 and 1 and 5 and 1. So let's see, 3 and 1 is 3 and 5 and 1 is 11. And this time we're looking at the max of this. So that's 11. Distance between 3, 5 and 2 is distance. So we look at the maximum of distance between 3 and 2 and distance between 5 and 2. So that's basically, so let's see, 3 and 2 uh, is 7, 5 and 2 is 10, so maximum is 10. Uh, then 3, 5 and 4, so 3 and 4, let's see, is 9, and 5 and 4 is 8, so maximum is 9. So this is the uh, distance between this new group and all of the other groups. So let's find or let's update the distance matrix, right, to reflect the new grouping structure. So this is the new matrix. So see, I have all of the new groups here. Um, so now we are ready to group again, right? So which item or which group should be merged uh, in the next step? So again, look at the minimum element. So even though... I have this maximum distance, okay? So whenever I look at the distance matrix here, I'm always merging clusters that are the closest to each other, right? So I'm looking for the smallest element in the distance matrix always. So it's five. So basically we are merging elements or groups two and four. 
this is a new group structure i have three and five two and four and one so we need to calculate distances between all of these groups now right in order to get an updated distance matrix so let's see um so distance between these two groups right two four and five i have the previous distance right here so to calculate distance between two four and this group three five i need um so let's see so i have three five here so i need distance between three five and two that's 10 then 3 5 and the next element 4 that's 9 maximum between 10 and 9 is 10 okay so that's the distance between groups 2 4 and 3 5 now let's look at the next so, so the remaining group so we have this distance between 2 4 and 3 5 now I need distance between 1 and 2 4 so let's see so 1 and 2 4 so is the maximum between so I have 2 and 1, so 2, uh, let's see, 2 and 1 is 9, and 4 and 1 is 6, right, here, so the maximum is 9, so distance between this group 2, 4, and group 1 is 9, and we already know distance between 3, 5, and 1, right, which is 11 here. So we don't need to calculate that all over again. So now we have distances between all the current groups. So we are ready to update our distance matrix. This is the updated distance matrix, which reflects the current group structure. Uh, okay, now which group should be clustered next? Look at the minimum element, which is 9. So basically, we are going to cluster elements, uh, we're going to mer merge together group 1 and group 2, 4. So it's reflected here. So these are the current groups. So we have two groups remaining. So to update our distance matrix, we need to calculate distance between these two groups. Okay, let's do that. Uh, so distance between groups 1, 2, 4 and 3, 5. This is the current um, distance matrix. Uh, so let's see. So I have 3, 5 here. So I want distance between 3, 5 and 1, which is 11. And then I want distance between 3, 5 and 2, 4, which is 10. That covers all of the elements here, right? 3, 5 and 1 we got. 3, 5 and 2, 4 is done. So we covered all of the elements. So that's maximum between 11 and 10 is 11. So that's the new grouping uh, so sorry so now we are ready to uh, calculate our updated distance matrix so that's the distance matrix we have two groups left uh, which group should be clustered or merged next it's pretty obvious uh, 3 5 and 1 2 4 and that's the end of algorithm right so when we combine all of the elements into a single group that is it so again, we can represent this entire process visually using a dendogram. So let me speak a little bit more about this dendogram uh, in this video. So if you remember, first we clustered or first we merged groups 3 and 5. If you go back, you'll see that the distance between them was 2. So let me just go back quickly. Uh, maybe not so quickly. Yes. So 3 and 5 when we merged, the distance was 2. And that is reflected on this y-axis or this height. So this is merged at 2. The next groups to be merged were 2 and 4. And you can see this roughly, this is about 5. So let's see what was the distance between 2 and 4. So, yeah. So we merged 2 and 4. The distance between them was 5. So this is slightly at a higher level, right? Because the, this is merged at five. And if you go ahead and check that we'll find that this one and two, four was merged at maybe somewhere nine. And uh, so basically this dendrogram not only represents the order in which we merge different groups, but it also gives us the distance between, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so it also gives us the distance between the different groups right when they were merged together so we'll see how to build this dendrogram in r in another video but you can it's a good idea to be able to plot this roughly right i don't expect you to get it you know accurate to the decimal point but uh it, it's a very valid quiz question right and so in, in the second quiz i could very well ask you to construct a dendrogram 
and of course i can of course i can easily ask you to carry out any uh, you know to execute this complete linkage or a single uh, linkage um, clustering process so you should know these algorithms very well you should be able to execute them manually by hand so another type uh, of agglomerative clustering uh, method is average linkage. So as the method suggests, we are going to look at average or mean of distances. So for single, we had a minimum here. For complete linkage, we had a maximum here. And for average linkage, we have the mean here. So what is the uh, distance between these groups x and y according to this average linkage so basically again we calculate euclidean distance between x1 y1 and so on uh, x2 y uh, distance between x2 y2 so basically all of the pairs and then the distance between the two class or two groups x and y is the average of all of these distances so this is slightly more tedious to calculate than the single or the complete linkage because you know mean involves in more decimal points and more calculations um but i could ask you to do this with simpler numbers right so I'm not going to uh, walk through this agglomerative uh, clustering uh, or this average linkage method because it will proceed in exactly the same way, right? So again, so as the average, uh, sorry, as the complete and single linkage, the only change will be instead of maximum, right, you will calculate the mean distances. So it's a good idea to go back and redo uh, the example with uh, this mean uh, average of these distances. So another method is uh, Ward's method and this is actually quite popular in um, I guess uh, in, in a lot of research I've seen a lot of research papers use this method. So uh, the concept is a little bit different for this right. So this is based on the idea of minimizing the loss of information from joining two groups. And what do you mean by loss of information? So loss of information is defined to be this increase in the error sum of squares or ESS criteria. So basically what is error sum of squares of a group? I have a group or a cluster. I calculate its square deviations from the center. So it's given in this third bullet point, right? For any cluster K, its error sum of squares of the Kth cluster is the sum of square deviations of every item in the cluster from the mean or the cluster centroid same thing so if there are k if there are currently k clusters then the error sum of squares or this loss of information is the sum of all of these uh, error sum of squares of all of the clusters okay so basically what this does is at every step it will consider all possible uh, or union of every possible pair of clusters and then uh, the clusters whose union results in the smallest increase in the error sum of squares are joined. So basically clusters that result in the smallest loss of information are joined. You can imagine how complicated this is because even if we have four or five elements, you have to look at all possible permutations and combinations of clusters. So this is a little bit painful to execute. So I will not ask you to execute this or to do this manually in the quiz. Um, we will, however, learn to implement this in R. So basically, again, in a as in any agglomerative clustering, we pretend or we uh, treat every item as its own cluster. So if you have capital N items, you have capital N clusters. Um, so what is error sum of square of a group that has a single item? It is zero, right? If a group has a single item, its error sum of squares is going to be zero, okay? And then we'll uh, keep on uh, merging these different clusters together. And at the other extremes, when all of the clusters are in a single group, right? In agglomerative, we start from uh, one extreme, which is treat all of the items uh, as clusters. And, the other, and then we go to the other extreme where all of the items are in a single cluster. So ESS for that is given by this formula. X bar is, of course, the mean. Um, so this is the idea. So the idea here is a little bit different from the other methods. But however, it is still an agglomerative clustering method. 
so this is just a practice example so this is oh uh so this is a distance matrix that i have made up and this nine is in a wrong space so this nine is supposed to be here okay so uh it's a good i, I it's, it's a good idea to practice uh to execute the entire single linkage complete linkage and average linkage so this is only four elements so average linkage is not too bad okay so it's a good idea to try all of these three methods and practice them on this uh distance matrix what is Uh, so I think that's all for this video. In the next video, uh, which I'll probably post uh, next week, I will talk about the other kind of methods. So remember, hierarchical was just one of the three kinds of methods. So we also have partitional and Bayesian methods. So in next week, we'll study uh, definitely the partition method, perhaps the Bayesian method as well. Uh, so yeah, that's all for now. Uh, don't forget to practice. Don't forget to solve this exercise. All right. Bye.